Welcome to Ahkam SOS, the show that discusses the duties and practices of Muslims in accordance with his, the Grand Ayatollah, His Eminence, Sayyid Sadiq Shirazi. May Allah prolong his life. With me is Sheikh Ali Ma'ash. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh Man. Assalamu alaikum, Rahmatullah. Alhamdulillah, bakhir. Sheikh Man, last time we were talking about uh, the, the maqam of Musalli, the places where Musalli would worship. Uh, we were going through the criteria. We we're talking about usurped places. We talked about a place where uh, it has been purchased with, with uh, haram money, as in khums hasn't been paid on it. We talked about stationery. Are there any other criteria or any other locations where one is not allowed or refrain from uh, praying salah in? Inshallah. A'udhu billahi al-sami'an alim min ash-shaytan al-rajim. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa sallallahu ala muhammadin wa alihi al-tayibin al-tawahirin. Allahumma salli ala muhammad. There are nine conditions and criteria with regard to the place of the, the praying person or the, the place of the musalli. Now we've discussed three of them. Now the fourth and the rest of the criteria we begin with today, inshallah. Now, number four, um, you have to make sure that you pray in a place that is not haram or forbidden. And what does that mean? Yes. Let's say if you pray under a roof in which is almost going to collapse and, and, and fall down. Uh -huh. And that happens in the war zones. Those who okay. are living in uh, you know, almost half demolished or destroyed properties. And they still live there because they have no place to go. Yes. Uh, deprived family. You know, they have no money to migrate to other countries. Now, if you know that uh, that roof will, you know, so it's not stable. F you know, will okay. fall in any time, then you're not yes. allowed to pray under. It's haram, okay. forbidden. You can't pray there. We can give other examples. For example, you know that the place you pray, uh, or let's say a tent or a cottage, and you know that there are beasts might yes. attack. Mm -hmm. Again, you have to avoid praying in such places. So anything that harms yourself, brings darar and harm to yourself, you have to avoid it. In and don't pray in that place. What about in today's society? Shaykh, unfortunately, all over the world, uh, you know, if I may mention some countries, Yemen, Syria, uh, Iraq a couple of years back, these are like war zones. Are we allowed to pray there? Or Because an airstrike or a bomb can happen at any time. Well, as I've mentioned, if it's about to, you know, let's say the property about to collapse or about to, you know, um, through a missile, you know, there's the, there's the sound of the airplanes, yes. the, sound, the sound of the sirens, for example. Yes. You have to make sure you avoid praying that time. Okay. Until you feel it's safe, you can okay. pray, then you can begin so I to guess, pray. I guess you need to, you need to understand uh, the daily routines um, and understand uh, whether there is going to be uh, a situation or not in order to pray but most likely because there's always a ceasefire there's always they fight for a certain amount of time and they stop fighting i remember uh a couple of years back in samarra uh during the daytime it was safe but at night time it wasn't exactly so, uh, in the daytime they would let the zawar come to visit samarra exactly. but as soon as it's coming towards maghrib they'll tell you get out move 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 you need to leave exactly so you have to make sure you meet that condition you find a safe place um and you pray your, your, your salah safely because your life is important yes. in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you know, leave the worship now, find a, a safe place and then pray. So it's important that you keep your life uh, as a priority and safe and then you can uh, do and, and uh, perform the worship. Unless it's the time is, let's say, you have only a few minutes, then you pray yani, in a condition that uh, you must perform the prayer in any condition. Because the hadith says that the, the prayers cannot be ignored and neglected at any uh, time or, or okay. cost. Okay. You have to perform it in any time, or in any way. Sitting, I don't, laying down, in any how you have to pray. And it shouldn't be qada. Yeah. So that's important. So the next point, Sheikh, so you're saying that 
This was was this point specifically to do with a roof or also any building which is not stable? So what if the floor wasn't 100%? Exactly the same applies. Anything that brings harm to yourself. Okay. You have to be uh, in immunity and, 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 and safety from the harm. So you shouldn't pray a place, let's say uh, the ground is very uh, unstable. You might fall down. Mm -hmm. There's a, let's say, uh, an underground, let's say, a yeah. tunnel, for example. You might fall inside that tunnel. Anything that brings harm, you should avoid it and do not uh, perform that act of prayer until you find uh, a safe place. With the f regard to the fifth criteria, um, again, um, there are places which are also haram to pray. For example, the place that you want to stand and pray or sit and pray, so your feet, both feet, are on that place it shouldn't be on, as an example, uh, the name of Allah on that uh, mat or carpet. Okay. Sometimes you see there are um, inscribed, let's say, um, mats by the name of Allah SWT. Yes. And they, they are usually used to be on, on the wall, for example, mm -hmm. hang on the wall. Yeah, but let's true. say if you want to use it as a prayer mat, you have to make sure you, don't, you do not step on the word of Allah. Yes. That's haram. Again, you yeah. can't pray while you're both feet on the word Allah. of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's not allowed. Okay. Um, with regard to the sixth criteria, again, um, you have to make sure that when you want to pray in a certain location, you have to make sure that you can pray fully with all the conditions of a prayer. So for example, I can do qiyam, you know, oh, okay. uh, stand still and Upright, record, sujood fully without any issue. But if I was in a in a location, let's say it was a an underground, as in a, a loft, for example, yes. and I pray in that loft or underground, for example, and the ceiling was so low oh. that I cannot do record properly, okay. or I can't e even up, be upright while, while I'm, yes. I'm, for example, standing to pray. So I have to pray in the state of let's say sujood, half, half record. Yeah. No, I'm not allowed to pray in this place. I have to leave this place okay. and find a place where I can easily do and freely do the record, so sujood, and upright. A place where you're not restricted. Exactly. Um, you know, from standing or record, sujood. Uh, unfortunately, I think you've you've been there. I've definitely visited the prisons uh, where Imam, I believe, is uh, al Qadim, where he was in deep in the tunnel, in the deep the underground prison, where he couldn't even like if you go there and visit it. I'm not sure he still go there today. He's, he couldn't even stand and do Qiyam properly. It's so small. Exactly. The, 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 the prison was so small and tight, unfortunately, but that was Majboor. He, he had no choice. But you're saying that if um, you, know, you have an alternative, it's better exactly. to go for the alternative. Yes, you have to. Uh, you shouldn't choose to pr pray somewhere. Exactly. You have so to discomfort. delay your prayer and you go out and you find a safe place to pray uh, with full conditions of Salah, and then that's fine, even if it's a bit late, but not to reach the stage of qada as important. Some yes. people might think that, okay, khalas, we can't pray in the airplane um, because we can't you know, do the salah properly. Then khalas, we're going to sit in the, on the chair and let the, the adhan go and, and, and everything and even the sun sets and the qada and then I, I pray. You're not allowed to. You must pray in any how, even if you can't stand and pray. Sit in your you sit in your chair and you pray, khalas. You must do this Worship this, this wajib and khalas, you've given to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala an ob obligatory act of uh, per, uh, worship. Shaykh, um, is there any places where it's actually haram to pray there? Like you're not allowed? Yes, the seventh criteria speaks about this condition and that is to do with performing the salah um, with in line with the head of the ma'asum alayhi salam's grave. Okay. So okay. let's say the Ma'asum's head is in this, in, in this uh, location and you pray in line with the Imam's head. Okay, so like, like exactly. ah, where the grave is. Exactly, the grave so of the, the grave Imam Ma'asum alayhi salam. Where the head is, so your exactly. sujood matches yeah. the level with It the has to be head. back. Ah, okay. Behind. Just behind the Imam's uh, body and, and you know, the location of the head of the Imam alayhi salam. So uh, if my sujood is by the chin or by the neck, that's okay? By the shoulder? Or should it be low below his feet? You see, when you stand to pray 
towards the qibla and you have the darih on your left for example yes. so the imam's head would be near to you yes because when the imam's head would be towards you know the face would he towards the, uh, the qibla so when you pray you have to make sure you're you're, you're way back from the imam's uh, body and and the head mm. so you pray and the imam's body is in the front all mm. the other side it should be in line with the the one who is performing the prayer and the salah. That's important. Is it okay to go a little bit in front or it should always stay behind? You see, it, it the mas'ala says that you're not allowed to uh, perform the salah ahead of the imam or in line okay. with, the, with the grave of the imam, Ma'asum alayhi salam. So we have to make sure we stay away from uh, praying uh, in line with the imam's head. And this will and make the salah batil. Correct. Of course, of course, wow. the salah would not be accepted. Yeah, now, with regard to the Ma'asumin alayhi salam, it's with regard to the, the Prophet of Islam sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, and his, his holy family of Ahlul Bayt alayhi salam, we shouldn't uh, pray um, ahead or in line with their body, the, the grave where they're buried, buried. And that's the Sayyid said, according to the obligatory precaution, ihtiyat wujud. So that's important that we. Uh, stay away from praying ahead of the imam's body and or even in line um, with regard to the eighth uh, criteria um, it is important that the place that we choose to pray to be clean and tahir so praying in a place on, on a prayer mat on the rug or the carpet or even the tiles for example the, cer uh, the ceramic for example if there are uh, moisture najasa if there's najasa on the floor, on the, on the carpet, and it's the, the najasa transfers from one body to another, then you cannot pray. You okay. can't pray on the, in the place in which there is najasa. So you have to make sure that you choose a place where it's tahir and you pray. Of course, with regard to the sujood, it's important that the place of sujood, the, the turba, to be tahir, or the yes. clay you pray on is tahir. Mm -hmm. That's important. You cannot pray. Uh, on a on a turba or the, or the clay in which, even if it's, it was a, a dry najasa, you have to make sure it's tahir, so you can put your forehead on that turba and prostrate. Now the ninth criteria uh, with regard to the place of the musalli, you have to make sure that when you do the sujood and prostration, it shouldn't be higher or lower than your knees. Okay. In other words. Uh, there's a specific measurement they give they would say uh, fuqaha that four fingers so you place the four fingers on on the floor and you put your uh, turba or the clay to pray on and it shouldn't actually exceed the four fingers mm -hmm. the height so you shouldn't pray let's say um, where the um, the position of the turba is higher than your knees more than four fingers I see. and likewise to go lower, you, you cannot pray in a, let's say, a, a place or where it's lower than, uh, four fingers yeah. lower than your knees, for example. Again, you, you measure with your own fingers. So, Sheikh, now one would ask then, what if you're at a position where the floor is slightly tilted? So my sujood would either be a little higher than my knees, or my sujood would be a little lower because the floor is at a slant. Is that, does that rule still apply with the four fingers? Of course, you have to apply the four fingers. I mean, um, either higher or lower. You have to make sure it's not uh, lower than your knees, four fingers. Otherwise, you have to choose a, a place, you know, a flat place um, that you can pray. So that's, that's important to uh, bear in mind. Asen, Sheikh, and thank you very much. So uh, we discussed like nine criterias of the place of worship for the Masadi. We discussed uh, a place that's not usurped. We discussed uh, a place where you know the the money had to have homes paid on it in order to purchase it. We talked about a place that's not moving. Uh, we talked about uh, a place where you know you can't be attacked. Um, also, um, a place where the roof is stable and not weak. Um, which other ones did we discuss, Sheikh? Yes, I'll just give a summary of of the nine criteria. Uh, just a quick summary. Basically, uh, we spoke about the first criteria, which was about uh, if we are allowed to pray in a usurped place, which is not of course. I mean, yeah. you have to make sure you find 
a place where you have the permission to pray from mm -hmm. the owners, and that's important. And if it's, let's say, you, you didn't know about it, then your salah is valid because you never knew about the hukum yeah. of, of this place which was usurped. Also, we spoke about um, the second criteria, which was about uh, being stationary. That's important that when we go to uh, uh, using transport, all types of trans transport, you know, trains, buses, ships, boats, airplanes, we have to make sure that we pray uh, in that place if we are in need of praying in those places because um, these, place, these uh, locations of prayer, let's say the bus or the train, are moving places. We can't pray in a moving place unless we have to. There's mm -hmm. a time, you know, there's nearing the sunrise or sunset, then we have to pray, there's no way. But otherwise, um, uh, if, we're, if, we, if we are not compelled to pray in, th in those places, we have to wait till we reach our destination and we pray uh, the salah yeah. uh, with more stability and stationary. On the third one, we spoke also about that we have to complete the salah in the place. Mm -hmm. So, for example, we're not allowed to uh, pray in a places in which um, there are, for example, crowds coming in and out. Yeah. And Let's say and there's, there's a train, um, sorry. Train station or uh, the Masjid Haram where you know, people are praying and then they've, they're all coming out now, they've all turned around. Exactly, around. somewhere that you can pray safely. Yeah. There's no the rain, there's, there's no crowds and so forth. Also, um, on the fourth one, uh, we also mentioned about praying in a place which are, which are not haram. In other words, if I pray in a place let's say, a building that's almost going to collapse. Yes. Or a place in which, let's say, inside the, the cage of, of a lion, of a yes. tiger, uh -huh. that I might be attacked. <laughs> let's say um, I work well, there, in the zoo. I, I feed yeah. them, let's say, mm -hmm. and I want to pray there. Yeah. Am I allowed? Well, there's dan danger with this regard. Then you can't pray there. It's haram to pray there. And so forth. You have to make sure you pray in a place where you are in, in, in safety. There's no harm on your body, for yes. example. That's important. And the fifth one, we also sp spoke about, uh, again, um, standing or sitting is not haram uh, mm -hmm. for that person. Um, for example, when you sit in the tashahud or when you stand upright to do the salah, you make sure that there's no uh, writings of, of yes. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yes. on that uh, pray mat. It yes. says, you know, Allahu Akbar, and you stand on it and you pray. Yes. It's haram. You can't. You can't pray on this, on that location. The sixth one we spoke about that you have to make sure that when you pray in a place, you can fully perform the ruku and sujood. Yeah, so, with no restrictions, exactly. Yes. Uh, you have to make sure there's enough height mm. and width. Uh, to perform the salah in terms of the ruku', in terms of the sujood, even, even to be upright. You, you have to make sure that you don't bend down and, and you pray yes. because the ceiling is too low. low. Um, the seventh one also, we mentioned about um, the one who um, prays in the haram of the ma'asum alayhi salam in the holy shrines, make sujood. sure that yes. you do not uh, pray ahead of the imams the uh, grave, yes. not in the line. head or the grave or yeah, the, the body, the in line or in line with the imam's body as well. Yeah. So you pray way back from oh, the imam's yes. grave. That's important, and that's mainly for the Prophet sallallahu and his pure family, Ahsan. the uh, fourteen ma'asum alayhim as salam. The eighth criteria also we spoke about. You have to make sure that the place you pray is not najis. Yes. In other words, uh, it's not uh, moisture that yes. transfers the najasa to your hands, to yes. your knees, to your forehead, for example. Oh, the turba where you're doing also, the yes. turba important, that it's the turba must be yeah, also uh, tahir when you pray on it, uh, even if it's dry. You shouldn't pray on uh, yes. turba where, where it's najis, if it's dried. That's important. We also spoke about the ninth criteria, which was about uh, prostrating and doing the sujood uh, on, the, on, on the turba. But it shouldn't be more than more than fingers. and higher than four fingers, yes. um, joint fingers. And we must mention that these criteria must be fulfilled 
If not, your salah is batal. It is void. Exactly. The Sayyid says in some occasions it's obligatory precaution, which is that you have to yes. avoid it. And that's important we uh, keep the, the manners of, of the salah, inshallah. Ahsan Shaykh, thank you very much. And thank you to all the viewers for joining us on Ihqam SOS. Inshallah, you can prevent yourself from falling into any of the criteria to make sure that your salah is sahih. And please remember me and please remember Shaykh in your dua, inshallah. Until next time, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. Ah, 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 ah.